it was brought to my attention by my manager that the the community clinic has um, a lot of different um, demographic groups, and there was a higher rate of diabetes in the Burmese, Bhutanese, and a few of the other migrant groups. And so we wanted to wanted our service to target these groups better, so that we can sort of uh, catch them early before they get to a stage where their diabetes was poorly controlled and their feet tend to get um, in poor condition as well. And then we did some research into which groups we wanted to work on first and we chose the Burmese group. And so we got in touch with the uh, Migrant Resource Centre who, who told us about the elder for the Burmese community. We worked with the council to come up with um, a plan for the day and um, then from there I went back to the health centre and tried to get a few others involved in the allied health area and the idea was to keep the message really simple to give them an idea of what our roles are because like, a lot of people haven't heard of what a podiatrist does let alone the word podiatry um, so explaining those concepts and how we could help them. We had um, quite good success with the community elder for the Burmese community um, it was quite easy in this case in that he was fairly well known and, um, and it was a tight-knit community. Um, so he, he just said, this is an interesting thing to do, it'll be beneficial to all of you and come along and, and the community responded. So what I found out about the Burmese community was that they didn't like to wear shoes. It was culturally um, acceptable to go around at home without shoes to walk outside in thongs, um, even in winter. It was just put your socks on, put your thongs on, your slippers on. Um, it wasn't just, it just wasn't part of their culture. Um, and shoes were considered dirty as well. So putting it on at home in the house in a clean environment was not appropriate. Um, that, that was an issue for those with diabetes with no feeling in their feet because they could step on a piece of glass or, and it becomes a big problem later on. So they needed it for protection. We go through um, each of the four steps with the person that we see and we used lots of props and we used an interpreter at the same time. Um, and we use a shoe that we think is appropriate and we get them to compare this sh appropriate shoe to their own shoe um, and that, that helps when there's language barriers because they've got something to hold, to feel and to touch. Um, and the idea behind it being that if they can go into a shoe store and do the same thing with the shoes on the shoe store, uh, they'll be getting a, a more appropriate shoe. If the person could show me that they could do these four tests and, um, and understood we, we were winning in, in that sense, yeah. I guess the, the top tips would be to do your research, um, to really get to know the, the target audience or your target community. Um, and it helps to have a little bit of language, like to learn some really basic terms that they might use, even like hello or good day in, in their language. Uh, it just breaks that barrier straight away. Um, misconceptions as well, often with the referrals that we get, it, there's quite a clear idea of what the referrers want to get from us. So with me, it's usually patients not wearing good shoes, can you help with footwear education to prevent diabetes complications? So straight away I know what, what the, um, the cultural issues are um, and I can do some research into the community to try and work out how to address that barrier uh, and networking, like using the, the resources we already have. I mean. Royal's got the Migrant Resource Officer, um, got the Migrant Resource Centre that we that has access to all these different elders. Um, the councils have good information and the interpreter, interpreter services, so knowing, being aware of the services probably helps to, to cater for the groups.